In this video, I'd like to go over a few tricks when it comes to creating magical effects. So we have our dear friend Hubert the Owl right here. And really it's uh, just him right now. We brought him in with an object merge. I changed the size with the match size sop and we have some normals. So what are we going to do with our dear friend Hubert? Well, I want him to turn into a magical owl and I want this cool moving magical particle like effect that moves along the surface of his body. We can kind of see that he has some really cool details that swirl around like this. So here's the challenge. Create a magical effect using particles, have it follow along the surface of the model so that we can get these flowy lines. And on top of that, make it so it kind of has this breathing like a magical thing going on. So almost like it kind of pulses uh, as it progresses, right? So how would you do that? Well, we are going to, first of all, define some vectors along Hubert. You may know that a normal is the direction that a point or a face is facing towards. And so we can take this normal information and we can change that. So as an example, we could take the normals and groom them in the direction of this swirl right here. And if we do that, then we can take those vectors and use that to tell the particles where to move along. Now, there are a few different techniques out there that primarily use VEX and cross product math to create particles that move along the surface. So the idea is that you might have a normal vector, you might have an up vector in Y, and if you have two vectors, then you can take the bits of information, the up and then the normal, and create a third vector that points in the direction that's along the surface. We're not going to do that though, because in this situation, it wouldn't work. We wouldn't be able to get this specific swirly pattern. So if you can't rely on that tried and true technique, what would you do? Well, let me show you. First of all, let's take a look at our normals. We have this right here. So looking pretty fine and fancy, but I like to change the default orientation of those normals. And I can do that by using a polyframe node. So on this polyframe, we can say, take the texture UV. Obviously your mesh needs to be UV'd for this to work. But if I uncheck the normal name and the tangent name, and I use the by tangent name and set that to normal, you can see that this gives us vectors that by default move along the surface of Hubert. And that's not a bad starting place to get things going. We can also do that here in the tangent name as well. It's kind of a similar process. So let's start off with that. It's a good place to begin. And then we're going to utilize the comb sop. The comb sop will take our normal. So check on the override normal right there. And we want to give this a little bit of a comb lift, so about 0.1. Click on the multi-tool over here, control, shift, right mouse, drag to change the size. And I can start grooming these vectors. Now this is going to take a fair amount of time, but I'm going to create the swirly patterns that I'd like to see on Hubert. And then I'll show you what we have. Okay, and after some grooming, we end up with this. I'm following the flow of these little swirly dudes. We have the eyes that are swirling around. And we do have some vectors that are still pointing away from Hubert. So one way that you can address those miscellaneous normal vectors is by using a smooth. And a lot of people don't realize that you can use the smooth for attribute values as well, not just position. So if we take that and set it to our normal, then you can see before and after, it just kind of averages all the normals 
with a Gaussian filter, which is great. Okay, once we have our normals, how do we use this in a particle sim? Well, first of all, we need particles. We could try to spawn that along the surface of Hubert's. I found that it kind of helps to have an offset away from the surface though. So let's create a VDB from polygons. And I'm going to make a version of Hubert here. So 0.05 on that voxel size, maybe even a little bit lower. And we are going to create a version of Hubert that's dilated outwards. So VDB reshape SDF. We can set that up right here, say dilate, and maybe do two on the offset. This is before, this is after. VDB converts, turn this back into polygons, and now we can simply just scatter some points. Now, as we scatter these points, we're going to uncheck the relax iterations. It just takes a lot longer to do it that way. And we're going to turn up the force total count here to a high value to get us started. So maybe like 100,000, something like that. Okay, once we have these points and they're offset from the surface a little bit, maybe even go a bit further like this. The next step is to take this into a particle sim. So pop net. And the first input's going to be those particles. The second input is going to be Hubert. And we're going to bring that in. So on the pop source, let's set this to points. First context, the birth. Let's set our constant birth rate right now, as we test this, to about 10,000. And while we're at it, copy this parameter, go back to the scatter, and change the force total counts to that value divided by 30. Remember that our force or our constant birth rate right here is this many particles per second. And right now, my scene is set to 30 frames per second. So when we scatter, we only need that constant birth rate divided by 30. So once we have that, there's our points. Let's bring in Hubert as a collider. So static object. We then need a merge like that. Merge the pop solve with the merge right there. And our static object needs to look at somewhere in SOPS. So let's actually just make a null here and we'll call out Kaliz Hubert. There we go. Back in our pop nets we can say dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash out Kaliz Hubert right there. And we have this fine fellow. He looks really weird because we combed those normals. So if we want to make him look a little better for the, uh, the big time here, we can uh, set a normal right before that node. And then there you go. Now we're good to go. If we try scrubbing forward in our timeline, nothing's going to happen. And that's because we're not changing the seed of our scatter at every single frame. So at this global seed right here, say $F. And now every frame is going to create a new version of the scattered points. Okay, cool. So where do we go from here? Well, we want to use a pop wrangle. We want to code using VEX. And I know that may sound a little frightening for some of you guys. So bear with me if you're advanced already, but I want to try to break this down into easy terms if you're newer to VEX. So what do you do when you want to make something in VEX? Well, first of all, try to take a screenshot of your scene. Look at the ingredients in your scene. We have Hubert and we have some points and ask yourself what you would like to do with those ingredients. I would like to take these points and have them listen to the points along our mesh because those points along the mesh of Hubert store the attribute data normal, which is pointing in the direction that I want these points velocities to go towards. Now, 
How would you do that? Well, I like starting with the function. And when you're first learning VEX, you need to memorize a handful of functions just to get going. One of those functions is going to be the near point function. And if you guys have watched my other videos, you've probably seen me use this before. This will return the point ID of, let's say, a point along Hubert. So these points have IDs. I want that ID because I'm going to use another function here called the point function. And as you can guess, that point function requires our ID that we just found to read in that normal information. So in VEX here, near points, press F1 or highlight the word and then press F1. Let's see what ingredients we need. Okay, we need our geometry. So it's asking you where should it go find this information. For right now, I'm going to say index number one. More on that here in a second. And we need to use our points current position to find that. So at P is saying use the current position of our particles. So it's saying use position of that guy when determining the nearest point. Okay. We need to assign this to a variable. So I'm going to say int for integer, and we're going to call this gather ID and set that equal to the near point function. This variable will not be saved once the wrangle is done thinking about everything. So that's why we use a variable and not an attribute. But anyway, that gives us the ID. What about this input number one though? It's kind of confusing because our pop wrangle doesn't have anything plugged into it. Or does it? If we go to inputs right here, this is talking about the inputs of the pop network itself. So input one should be set to myself. Input two should be set to second context geometry. When you're using this index, we start at zero and go up from there. So if we, let's say, had input one be the first context geometry, that would be the first input right here on the popnet. The second inputs would be the second context geometry right there. But the index, again, starts at zero, so it goes zero, one, it's looking at input number two right here. It's just one of those weird coding things that you have to get used to, but that's what's happening right there. Anyway, I'll kind of speed this up for you guys, but um, at this point, we want to find that normal. So we want to gather that information using the point function. So there's points. If we again highlight this, press F1, it's asking you where should we find this data from? Again, that's going to be index number one. And we need a string right here called n for normal to find that info. Lastly, we take the gather ID and that becomes the sampled velocity. This again needs to be a variable. So vector, a series of three numbers because normals exist in X, Y, Z. So vector gather normal is equal to that function. Okay. Lastly, how would we like to affect these points? For right now, let's just try saying that velocity is equal to the gathered norm and see what happens. So as we go forward, it looks like we are following the direction of those vectors. This situation isn't perfect though. You'll need to do more than this. So we have some particles that are going a bit rogue. They're off on their own and we don't want that. <laughs> we want them hanging around Hubert. So we need to also create another velocity vector that points towards Hubert to keep all those points contained. So how do we do that? Well, to draw another velocity vector, we can simply take our position of the sampled points. So in this case, we want our position along this point minus the position of a particle's point. So to get this position right here, 
we again need to use the point function. So same deal, except this time we're going to use P, gather ID, and vector gather position right there. Like I said, we want to take our found point position, so that's our gather pos minus our current position, and watch what happens. Now the particles will move towards Hubert. Okay, so that's really cool. What if we want both of those velocity vectors happening? Because we do. I'm going to place this in parentheses, and I want to take the average between our gathered normal and our gathered position minus our current position. So take both of those forces, use the average. Now we have a blend between both of those forces. Our particles are still moving along the direction that we groomed, and it's still being contained fairly close to Hubert. Obviously, if you wanted to make the intensity more, you can just multiply that against a vector value, but this is the main setup for creating the particles that move along the surface exactly how you want it to be. Again, I'm not the first guy to come up with the idea of using particles that follow along the surface, but people make this way more complicated than it needs to be. And again, it might be a good VEX exercise to do everything using VEX and maybe a SOP solver, and it might even be a little bit faster to calculate. But at the same time, this grooming method and four lines of VEX gives you way more art directability and we also had the benefit of using a variety of pop forces. Uh, so, if you're a beginner in Houdini, hopefully that VEX overview was useful. If you're more advanced in Houdini, hopefully this goes to show that there are many effects out there which you may be overcomplicating. And sometimes, well, I would say more often than not, it's better to have a simple setup with better art directability than to have something that is overly complicated, but might be a good technical exercise. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this particular tutorial. Also, if you're new to VEX and you want to learn, you want to get better, then check out VEX Foundations 1, where I start from the ground up, I give you exercises, and if you'd like feedback or additional help along the way, I also offer professional consultations as well as mentorships through CG Forge Academy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.